Have you ever found yourself chest deep in swamp water with the snapping turtles, cotton mouths, and alligators swimming past you? What about spending your free time catching bugs with a plastic spoon? No, just me. We'll get to that story, but first, I'd better do some explaining. It all starts with citizen science. According to National Geographic, citizen science is the practice of public participation and collaboration in scientific research to increase scientific knowledge. Volunteers, members of the general public, collect and analyze data relating to the natural world. The list of ways volunteers can contribute is pretty extensive. It could be a group of bird watchers whose sightings are used to track migratory patterns, or it could be people who count insects as part of a pollinator conservation effort. This method of collaboration allows scientists to obtain a large amount of data in a scope that would otherwise be impossible due to time, geographic, or resource constraints. My first experience with citizen science was back in elementary school, when my family decided to get involved with Georgia Adopt-A-Stream, a volunteer program that monitors water quality. Clearly, I was not too excited about getting wet. The type of monitoring we chose to learn was called macroinvertebrate monitoring, which uses the abundance and diversity of tiny organisms like bugs and larvae to indicate the overall health of the stream. We quickly learned that this involves collecting water samples and then using a plastic spoon to find and catch the macroinvertebrates, which is actually very difficult because they are quite fast. We monitored the health of our creek for years after that, and our data, collected by us in our backyard, was used by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources to help inform water policy decisions for the entire state. Action is critical right now because the condition of our environment is deteriorating. In the past year alone, wildfires have become more frequent. From the years 2000 to 2018, wildfires burned more than twice the land area per year than in the 15 years prior. And according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, hurricanes are increasing in frequency and intensity due to rising temperatures and sea levels. Scientists cannot tackle these issues alone. Each of us, as individuals, can have an impact on our own community. And then if every community around the world participates, it can have a compounding effect and ultimately a global impact. For example, observations and data related to plants and animals gathered by nearly two million citizen science volunteers on the site Nature's Notebook have contributed to 17 different peer-reviewed scientific publications. Citizen science creates a bi-directional flow of knowledge in which we help inform researchers so that they can help inform us. Citizen science also has the capacity to resolve environmental justice issues and empower communities to make change. These benefits can be seen through the case of Love Canal, New York. Love Canal was a bustling, working-class community with hundreds of houses and a school. Unbeknownst to the residents, the neighborhood was built directly on top of 21,000 tons of toxic industrial waste that was placed there in the 1940s and 50s by a local chemical company. In 1978, a record amount of rainfall disturbed the ground, and the corroding drum containers of toxic waste broke through the ground right into people's backyards. Trees and gardens turned black and died. Children returned from playing with burns on their hands and faces. And later studies found that there were abnormally high levels of birth defects, miscarriages, and cancers in this community. This type of environmental injustice is actually not uncommon in working class communities. But citizen science can empower communities to take charge and use their collective power to make change. In Love Canal, a resident by the name of Lois Gibbs led a group of residents in the Love Canal Homeowners Association and organized a series of protests, rallies, and other methods of community organizing to pressure authorities to take appropriate action. These measures worked, and President Jimmy Carter, in an unprecedented act, 
used federal emergency funds to move the residents and begin to clean the site. Lois Gibbs and the other Love Canal residents were practicing an early form of citizen science where they noticed environmental abnormalities in their community and reported them. This is a prime example of our half of the bi-directional flow of knowledge and how citizen science can level the playing field when it comes to issues of environmental injustice. If this situation had occurred in the present day and they had access to all of the modern citizen science tools, they could have taken direct measurements of the pollutants in their water and soil as soon as they suspected a problem. Then all of the protests and rallies and media stunts to get authorities to come in and test would have been unnecessary and appropriate action could have been taken sooner. Like Lois Gibbs did, we all have the ability to take action to make environmental changes in our own communities. And sometimes, that means being chest deep in swamp water. Here I am with my mentor for my senior project, where I spent a year at a local nature park back home in Augusta with the snapping turtles and the cotton mouse and the alligators, counting bugs to monitor water quality and reporting my data to Georgia Adopt a Stream. In this past semester, I was an intern with the Upper Oconee Watershed Network right here in Athens, and the results for my testing were given to Georgia Adopt a Stream to add to the statewide picture of the health of our waterways. My experiences with citizen science set me on a path towards my current academic and career goals in the environmental field. But the beauty about citizen science is that anyone can participate, even you. Whatever your motivation, background, or interest is, everyone can gain something from engaging in this type of activity. And don't worry, you don't have to get chest deep in swamp water to participate. Some great places to start your journey with citizen science are bird watching with Nest Watch, amphibian counting with Frog Watch USA, or stream monitoring with Georgia Adopt a Stream. And you can find even more options at citizenscience.gov. You too can be a scientist and contribute to the protection of the environment. Take a step outside. Global change starts right in your backyard. Thank you.